what the heck's a VIP line? All right, welcome back to the new nurse guidebook. My name is Pierre Lafour. I'm a registered ICU nurse. And today I'm gonna share something that's very near and dear to my heart. And that is IV tubing and line maintenance and everything. The first thing I would like to go over is how the heck you should label your IV tubing. This is what I've done for myself and what has worked for me personally. Take it if you want it, leave it if you don't. But here's my method. So first thing I like to do is I like to grab lab labels because they are waterproof. And so the first thing I'm going to do is for our major vasopressors, so norepinephrine or levofed, I write in all caps, levo. I do it like this, L-E-V-O. So everybody can see it. And then we're going to do epi for epinephrine, like this. And then we're going to do vaso for vasopressin. And then... All right, so then you do Levo on the Levo line, and I put it right there at the end, so when you see it going into the patient, you know exactly what medication it is. We'll do Epi on the Epi line. Boom, like that. And we'll do Vaso on the vaso line. Now, one common thing that I see that would give a brain aneurysm to some of my old coworkers is walking in on patients and seeing this going into a central line. You've got just this massive conglomerate of lines all going into one central line. The problem being, these are all going at different rates. And so the epi and the vaso are way back here, mixing together and taking their time to get into the line and then mix in with the levo. Well, I've found that there's a better way that works for me personally and allows all the medications to go in at a consistent rate and there's no variability as far as time and effort. So now I'm gonna show you a method that has served me very well, but first let's clean this up and get rid of it. So what we have here are my favorite love three-way stopcocks. The way these work is we're gonna assemble them together like this. Actually, I'm gonna show you a quicker way. All right, now that we have the three-way stopcock made, what we're going to do is this long one means that it's off. So we want to turn this guy this way. When I make a VIP line, that's a very important line. That's where all your pressors are running. Typically I'll have three for the big three, levo or norepinephrine, epi or epinephrine, and vaso or vasopressin. And I'll leave one backup open port in case you wanted to run an antidysrhythmic like amiodarone, Tham, lidocaine, you have an option to add that on as well. You can also throw a carrier fluid on the back. So the next thing I want to do is I want to connect my presser lines to here. So give me one moment and we'll do that. Whew. All right, so now we have all of our pressers going in. Typically, I like to make the presser that's running at the quickest rate in the back as it carries all the fluids in. So the next thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is actually turn these on so that they can go to the patient. So this means on, on, and this is off. Then we're gonna do this one like that. So it's on, on, and then we'll do this one like this. And then the most important part is connecting it to the patient. Boom. Now our VIP line is connected to the patient. It's very important that when you have a patient, if there's extension tubing to remove this, that way the amount of time between a rate change and your vasopressor drips, um, the amount of time that it takes for it to travel to the patient is less. Also, another major thing with VIP lines is removing microclaves. Microclaves are great devices when it comes to creating 
friction on a normal IV port, but with a VIP line where you have very important medication running into a patient, what I've found is that you run the risk of this medication being stopped or delaying the process of it running into the line to your patient. And if it's running, if it's a maximum concentrate where it's a very potent medication, but it's going at such a slow rate, sometimes your patient may go 30 minutes before the medication, the pump detects the resistance from the microclave and won't actually flow into the patient. So it's very important from what I've learned and my personal experience to remove microclaves from your VIP lines. That's a little VIP line 101. I hope you appreciate this. If you found value in this video, be sure to like it. And if you learned something new, if there's some other content you'd like me to make in the future, uh, leave a comment in the comment section. And if you know somebody who could benefit from this video, uh, please share it with them. This has been the New Nurse Guidebook, and this is Pierre LaFleur signing off. I'll catch you in the next one.